Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today. My name is Nick and I am a dream curator at the American Family Insurance Dream Bank. In case you're not familiar with Dream Bank, we are a free resource dedicated to the inspiration and pursuit of dreams. The reason we exist is because American Family Insurance believes that your dream is the most valuable thing you will ever own. One of my roles at Dream Bank is planning our series of crafting events, which I feel super lucky about because I am an artist and crafter in my personal life. I'm making this series of videos to bring some crafting into your home. You'll see different types of videos, some geared towards adults, some geared towards kids crafting. So there's a couple different skill levels involved, but all of these are gonna to try to use supplies that you should have around your house. If not, I'm gonna to try to give ideas too for, for substitutes that you can use. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this video and we will get started. Today, this is actually gonna be more of a family crafts. This is one that everybody in your whole family should be involved in. Um, and it's a little unique because we're not just making a craft, but we're actually making a game. And it's a game that everybody can participate in. And it's a game that's rooted in gratitude. So there's a lot of really good uh, exercises involved in this. A lot of cooperation, brainstorming, and things like that for your whole family to get involved in. So first, I'm going to go over some of the supplies that I have here. And we'll talk about the, the concept behind it. So this video is all about discovering your family's treasures. And by treasures, I don't necessarily mean physical things, although they can be physical things. But treasures are going to include things that make your family unique, things that your family cherishes, things that you enjoy doing together, things that help give your family uh, an identity and like a sense of unity. Um, and those are all things that are important to reflect on, I think, especially right now. So the, the idea behind this is that you're going to make a set of icons or emblems or medallions that all represent what your family's treasures are, what's important to you. And these are going to be assigned a point value, and then they're going to be hidden around your home, and you're going to have a treasure hunt to find them. And, you know, everybody can take turns hiding things. You can do certain rounds that way. Um, you can assign different point values to things that you'd like. But essentially, it's a two-part thing where, one, you're reflecting on what your family's treasures are, and you're making some emblems for those things. The second part is the game where you're hiding those, and then you're having a family treasure hunt to see who can find the most in a certain amount of time. Okay, so that being said, I've got a few different uh, supplies here that we can use to make the, the emblems. So I've got some paper, a couple different kinds. Uh, there's white paper. Um, this is a piece of coffee stained paper. I went over this process in my last adult crafting video. So if you're interested in, in viewing that and using a piece of this, um, and I'll get to this later, but this is going to tie into sort of the, the treasure theme since it reminds me of an old treasure map. I've got some scissors. We're going to want to cut probably. Um, you know, this is something that you're going to want adults to be in charge of, something sharp and pointy, things like that. So always be safe. Always do this with adult supervision. Again, this is something the whole family should be participating in. Uh, so then I've got some colors, just something to color with. If you don't have something to color with, maybe you could just use pens and pencils, um, regular stuff, and just be really decorative with it. But I just grabbed some colored pencils, some markers, uh, glue and tape, um, a stapler too. So different ways to attach things. And then some scraps. So I've got a scrap piece of cardboard just to flap off of a box. This next piece was from a cereal box. This next piece was just from a box that had food in it, you know, so I'm just uh, upcycling these things just straight from my recycling bin. And the idea behind making the the emblems, the medallions or icons or whatever you want to call them, is uh, to draw them. And you're going to draw them and then make them kind of sturdy because you don't want to just be hiding little slips of paper around. They're going to get crinkled up, messed up or ruined or something like that. So we will do a drawing that's going to represent one of your family's treasures and attach it to something sturdy, like a piece of cardboard or something like that. Okay, so let me move some of this stuff. So I've got a little bit of room to work here. And the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out what your family treasures are. So I've got, this is just a scrap of paper, it's just torn off, some leftover stuff, and there's going to be some brainstorming involved here. So everybody 
I would think everybody in your family should at least come up with maybe two. Um, you know, my family is pretty small. It's my wife and I, and then our six pets, um, which I guess is a lot for pets, but they don't really count as much. Um, so for my wife and I, you know, we would each come up with a couple and then, uh, assign a point value, you know, and then we're going to create them. So, uh, I think the first thing that every family should have is what I'm going to call the heart of the family. Um, and so that is something that just represents the overall unity and love that you guys share for one another. So we'll write that down. Heart of the family. And then mine, I've got a couple. So let's say, uh, you know, I really enjoy playing catch. When I was a kid, I played catch with my dad a lot. We played baseball in my backyard. So playing catch. Is something that I cherish, something that I look forward to doing um, with my own children at some point. And so then I also enjoy crafting, and that's something that my wife and I do together, and it's something that definitely identifies us as a family. A couple things she might say might be our dogs, Daisy and Blue. And I'm going to just lump them together. They'll count as one treasure. Um, and maybe going on walks together. So I'm going to put long walks. So you can see some of these are actual concepts and some of them are, are physical things. It doesn't really matter. They're just things that we enjoy doing together and things that kind of identify us as a family. Uh, I do want to mention that this whole idea came from one of my coworkers, uh, Leticia who is also a dream curator at Dream Bank. And so thank you, Leticia, for this idea. I think people are going to really enjoy it. Um, and I'm already having a lot of fun. Okay, so I've got my list. And maybe the heart of the family, that could be a special one. And it could be worth two. I'm going to put points here. And maybe the dog, since there's two of them, it's going to be one, one icon, but that could be worth two. And then the rest of these could be worth one. And you can have a much longer list. Maybe you have a bigger family. Maybe you are starting to rattle off these things. But um, but again, this is the part where you're doing some of the, the mental work. This is where you're thinking about what you're thankful for. You know, how your family identifies. You know, what makes you guys unique. So there's a little bit of homework involved in this. Maybe a little bit of discussion. Um, and a little bit of gratitude. You know, so I think that's really important to do and reflect on. So we're going to start with creating now some of these icons. So the first one I'm going to do is the heart of the family. And I've got some options here. I think what I'm going to do is use a piece of this. And first I'm going to just cut some of it out. And I'm going to show you a really nice easy way to make a heart. So I just kind of cut out a square, square-ish piece of paper. Or it's more like a cardstock from that box. And I'm actually going to fold it in half. Well, this is my, my easy secret, easy way to do a heart. And then I'm just going to draw one half of it here. So you can see that, just drawing half of a heart, starting with the, the side that's folded. And then we can just cut that out. And now here's the, the outside part. And then here's what we've got. And see, that's a, a lot sturdier than just a, just a piece of paper. And then you might want to decorate that, something that makes it a little special. What I like doing is maybe outlining it. And we're just, we're just coloring here. You know, so this is a nice sort of uh, double activity where you're doing a little bit of crafting. And then, you know, you're making a game out of it too, or I guess even a triple activity because you're doing the gratitude work at the beginning to identify what you all are thankful for. So we did a nice red outline. Maybe I'll go in with a red 
pencil. Let's see, that's a red orange. Here we go. And we'll just color it in. All right, so there it is. This is the heart of my family. That's what this represents. And maybe you want to write your last name on here or something that identifies you all. Um, or you could put the point value on here if you want. So maybe I'll just write like a, a two. So we know how much that's worth. Okay, so we'll put that off to the side in the ones that are completed. So now we'll do a different kind. Um, I'm going to do playing catch with my dad. So, you know, I think of maybe a baseball. Um, so that's going to be easy because paper's white. You know, baseballs are white. And maybe I'll take this black marker. Uh, and I could attempt a circle. Maybe I'll use the bottom of this mug here to draw a circle. It might be a little easier. I did get some marker on my mug, but fortunately these are washables. And the cap ran away on me, but we got it. We'll keep that nice and closed. And then, actually, now I know a baseball has stitches on it. So I'm going to draw these two half circles. Then usually the stitches are in red. That was kind of a quick and easy baseball, pretty painless. And this one, again, this paper is too, too flimsy though. So I'm going to want to put it on something sturdy. So I'm going to cut it out. Put that to the side. We can always use scraps later. And then we will attach it. Let's see, will it fit on here? Yeah, just barely. Look at that. So let's get our glue. Let's go around the edge. And then a few swirlies around the middle. Make sure we close that, doesn't dry out. We'll press it down. And then you can let this dry a little bit. And then I'm just going to cut it out, just following that same line. Cutting cardboard isn't the friendliest thing. I almost feel like we're making Christmas ornaments or something. They're like little medallions and things like that. Alright, so now we've got a super sturdy baseball. You know, and this can be hidden, uh, you know, in between couch cushions or under a table or something like that. You don't have to worry about it getting too beat up. I would just let the glue finish drying is all. And then if you want, you can go ahead and put the point value on there again, just to keep it consistent. All right, so we've got two treasures, two of your family's treasures so far. So put that off to the side. Okay, the next one I was thinking was uh, my dogs. So maybe I'll take this scrap again, and I'm going to cut, cut it down to just more of a rectangle. And 
and then maybe I'll cut that in half even. And I'll just work with half of this here. And so we're going to want to draw a couple dogs on here. So I've got two dogs. I have Blue, who is a big brown dog, and we will draw him pretty easy. We're just going to do a circle and kind of a couple upside down triangles, sort of like that. And then a round part for his mouth. Maybe he's smiling, he's happy here. And he's got big brown eyes. And we'll draw some eyes around that. Okay, and then he, let's see, we'll just need a nose. So we can sniff things. And then maybe I'll take the brown pencil and just color in a little bit. I always liked how that looked when you sort of do a darker outline and then you color in around it with a pencil. And he's a little lighter here, so I won't press as hard. Okay. Maybe we'll write his name. I spell it kind of funny. I spell his name B-L-U. Of course, the color is B-L-U-E. All right, and then I've got another dog named Daisy. And she's more black and white with a little bit of brown. So I'm going to kind of do She's shorter, too, so I'm going to put her down here. I'm going to start with a circle. Both their ears don't stick up. They kind of hang down like that. And there's Daisy. And then she has actually brown on her ears. So maybe you have a family pet that you want to try this with. I'm sure you guys treasure your pets. And she has a little bit of brown on her forehead. And we better stay organized here. Dropping stuff all over. There we go. All right, so I've got my two dogs, very cute. And then we want to make these nice and sturdy too, so they could be hidden around. Um, and then I have another idea for that, which might be kind of fun. So I've got two pieces of paper then. I'm going to overlay these, they're just regular paper. And I'm going to just trim them up so they're the same size. That's where the two pieces of paper match. All right, and then my idea is to maybe do this like a little pillow, you know? So if you've ever made a pillow, you've got a front and a back, and inside is some stuffing. And so the way we're going to do that, you can staple it around the edges, you know, to sort of make a little envelope, or like a little packet. Um, staples, you know, can be a little sharp and pokey sometimes, so I'm going to try taping it. So I want a piece of tape about that long. And then I'm going to fold it over. Just like that. And then we'll do another side. We're essentially going to do this to three sides. See that? So this is coming together. I'm folding it over. And we'll do a third side. Alright, so now three sides are, are sealed. 
and then you can see it opens up like a little packet and then you're going to want to find something to put in there almost like a little bit of stuffing you could put like a tissue or a napkin i'm going to see what i have around i've got some of these scraps that i just cut out so maybe if we crinkle some of these up it'll make a little bit of stuffing another good way to use up your scraps that you have do this last side here there we go so there's blue and daisy they're on their own little kind of like a pillow like I said you could just staple around three sides stuff it and then staple the last side I would just wanted to use tape just to make it a little more friendly so we got blue and daisy we'll put their point value on here they are worth two. Okay, so then another idea of mine, one of my family treasures, was walks. So going on walks. And for this one, we've got another scrap here. And maybe we're going to draw some feet. Some feet that are walking. So we will draw a shoe, kind of a cartoony shoe, um, but you know, it's sort of a, a small lump and then a big lump and then that's where your foot would go in. So we could draw a sock and then maybe a leg sticking out and then we'll draw another one kind of behind it so that way we can see that there's two. All right, so we've got two feet because they are going for a walk. And then I usually wear boots sometimes if I'm walking for a long time, and they're brown. So I'm going to color these brown boots. And this one we're going to cut out. And they don't all have to be circles or squares. You can cut out sort of just a whatever shape you want. And then maybe we'll put that on some of this cereal box that I have here. And we'll do the same thing, kind of like the baseball. Make sure that's open. That helps. And we'll just glue that down. And then we'll cut it out. Maybe I'll leave a little border on this one just for fun. glue sticking pretty good all right and what's missing the points the so walking was one I think is what we decided okay and the last one was crafting so that's something again that we like to do together my wife and I so for that one let's see I do have quite a bit of this left. And so maybe we'll just do the same thing here. So I like to think of, I don't know, looking at these, I want something maybe a little more colorful. So maybe I'll do like a paint palette, which if you're not familiar with one of those, kind of looks like this. 
with a hole there and you, you put your hand in it and it can hold all your paints for you. But since it's got paints on it, we can do little globs of paint, which is really just markers, but we're going to pretend that paint. And this represents how much we like art and how much we like crafting and making things. Got some green. I don't got any green going on yet. There we go. Maybe a purple. And maybe a blue. Okay. So we're going to cut this out. Y'all are going to be experts at this at this point. And then we're going to glue it down. You could always tape it down if you didn't have glue or staple it. Or you could just draw this right on something sturdy. Um, like this sort of cardboard I have here is white. You could just draw it right on here and cut it out. Instead of doing this, draw it on paper and glue it down. Either one works. Okay, and now that was worth one also. Let's put a one right there on it. Okay, so now I've got all of my family, my family's treasures and things that are important to us. And now these are going to be our game pieces. So these are what you're going to hide around the house. And like I said, you can maybe limit it to one room. If you have some younger treasure hunters, you don't want to make it too difficult. Um, you can have people take turns hiding them. So maybe round one, somebody hides them. Round two, somebody else. And that way everybody kind of gets a turn of being the mastermind and trying to find the best hiding spots for everything. So a few different ways to make these. And now we're going to want to make maybe just sort of a nicer version of this. Okay, so I'm going to use my brown marker. Again, this is coffee stained paper. I do show how to make this in a previous video. Um, it's more of an adult craft because it does use the oven and things like that. Um, but if you're interested in making some coffee stained paper, uh, you know, if you want to make old treasure maps and things like that for fun, you can definitely use something like this. And so I'm going to make this our family treasure hunt. And this is going to be our official sort of rule sheet for that. So we will write... F-A-M-I-L-Y, family, try to do a fun sort of font here, I like to do these sort of long curvy legs on some of the some of the letters kind of reminds me of pirates you know who love hunting for treasure and we will draw a line and we will draw a line this way too and then these are going to be for our points and then this is going to list the different treasures All right, so we have the heart of the family. So I'm just going to write heart on here. And that was worth two points. We have play and catch. 
worth one point. Crafting. One point. The dogs, Daisy. And the blue. They're worth two points. And long locks. They're worth one point. So I've got my official rule sheet. I've got my tokens. And then you can set a time limit that you think is appropriate. Maybe somebody has two minutes to hide them or five minutes to hide them. And then you let everybody, except that person, you let everybody cut them loose to go hunt for these. And maybe they just have a couple minutes, two or three minutes to try to find however many. I think the more you make, the better. Um, I would probably try to have, depending on how many members of your family there are, but you want a lot so you can start counting up the points, you know, and maybe it becomes clutch or maybe you come up with a way to break a tie if two people tie or if you do multiple rounds with each person then taking turns being the one who hides them uh, they can then uh, you know add up all the points from multiple rounds and see who wins there so that's pretty much it it's a really nice way to practice some gratitude uh, to kind of reflect on some things that you are thankful for that define your family and also make a fun game that everybody can participate in while using up some uh, some trash and some scrap things that would normally just go into the recycling bin. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you do this yourselves, I would love to hear about what your family's treasures are. So maybe leave them in the comments uh, on this post. And if you're interested in other things that Dream Bank has going on, uh, please keep up to date with our Facebook page. We've got a ton of videos, different types of content, um, and hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll find it of value. So thank you so much, and we will see you next time.